Joining us now in the studio is Kristen Eccles, who is a research scientist at Health Canada. Thanks for being with us. Oh, thank you for having me. Now you have an interesting background because you have a PhD in biology, but you also did your master's in geographic information systems. So how has that background informed your research in toxicology? I've always been really interested in the interrelated relationships between the health of the environment and the health of humans. And in order to really study this well, you need an interdisciplinary approach, bridging methods that have been commonplace in geography, such as geographic information systems, which includes mapping, spatial analysis, and geospatial statistics with biology and understanding how chemicals that are in the environment perturb uh, biological pathways leading to an adverse health outcome. Do you feel like there are gaps in the way chemical risk assessments are traditionally done? There are a few key gaps in the way traditional chemical risk assessments are performed today. So first of all, we're exposed to chemical mixtures, but the way chemical risk assessment is done is traditionally on a chemical by chemical approach. A lot of these approaches also rely on in vivo animal toxicity testing data, which is costly to perform um, and only generates a, a set amount of data that informs on th your target of interest. The other challenge of traditional risk assessments is the focus on apical endpoints. So those are the adverse outcomes such as cardiovascular disease or cancer. And we're really lacking information. It's a black box between when we're exposed to chemicals at the target site exposure and the adverse outcome. So what is the molecular chain of events that happens leading to this adverse outcome. So traditional risk assessments using animal models can't really inform on that as well as some of the new approach methods such as cell-based assays can. So tell me a little bit about the frameworks you're using to try and tackle those problems. So the two frameworks that we're using are the aggregate exposure pathway, which focuses on understanding the chemical fate and transport in the environment, and then going from the external exposure to the internal exposure within the body at the target site exposure with the adverse outcome pathway, which links biological information on initiation of the molecular initiating event all the way up to the adverse health outcome. And then tell us also within your framework how you're using geospatial and computational methods. The geospatial methods really apply well to the aggregate exposure pathway framework to understand um, the, the sources and patterns of chemicals in the environment. We're able to use geospatial methods such as mapping and spatial statistics to, for example, identify hotspots. And then computational methods that we're using for the adverse outcome pathway really rely on new approach methods, which are high throughput methods to generate a lot of data on the hazard of a chemical in a cell-based system. All of it sounds fascinating, and you can actually watch Kristen present her research Tuesday morning in Grand Ballroom B. Thanks, Kristen, for sharing all this with us. We appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me.